This is my dream home style pizza and I've been working on this recipe for almost two years. Now don't get me wrong, I love a classic Neapolitan pizza and I certainly love a New York slice. But I'm gonna leave those to the pros with the right equipment. Because when it comes to making pizza at home to me, there's only one way and that is pan pizza. But to get to this perfectly baked dough, melty cheesy goodness, a tomato sauce with the right kick and all of that in just about two hours from scratch using nothing but a regular home oven, I had to break Break a lot of rules. To show you what I mean, let's start with mozzarella cheese. We all know mozzarella is great pizza cheese, but if you've ever made pizza using one of these guys, you also know its biggest downside. These guys contain quite a lot of moisture and you're quite likely to end up with a sad, soggy pizza. Normally there's a simple fix. You go for low moisture mozzarella where a lot of the water has been removed industrially. But at least over here in Germany, low moisture mozz is pretty hard to find. And if you find it, it tastes like crap. So what's my solution? Well, let's turn turn this wet as ball of mozzarella low moisture. Let me show you how. Step one might be a little weird, but we're gonna crush this mozzarella with the palm of our hand. This is actually exactly what we want. You can get rid of the brine the mozzarella came in. Now we're gonna add all the mozzarella to a non-stick skillet. Very important that it's non-stick. Set that to medium-high heat. Gently move the mozzarella around with a spatula. And you can already see how there's like this milky whitish liquid coming out of the mozzarella. You can start folding the mozzarella over onto itself like this. Let's collect some of that liquid that came out. Be sure not to overcook the mozzarella. Once you realize most of the liquid has come out of it, it's time to move on. Carefully transfer the cheese from the pan into a flat bottom rectangular container and flatten it lightly with your spatula. And won't you look at that, we have basically separated our mozz from the moisture. Look how much we collected. This would all have ended up on your pizza. Now this is our low moisture mozzarella. You wanna let it set first, it's still a little bit stretchy, but I promise this one tastes so much better than most of the low moisture mozz as you will find in a regular store. Now you might be wondering, what about all this nice liquid? It clearly still contains some milky goodness and some butter fat, so are we wasting all of that? No, my friends, today, we are not wasting anything. Now let's work on our pizza dough. And this one is definitely special. It gives you the perfect pan pizza texture where it's light and fluffy on the inside, but still crisps up really nicely around the edges. Start with bread flour, even though all purpose would probably be fine as well. Oh. <laughs> To this, we're adding about 10% durum wheat semolina, which I found really helps with a crisper result. By the way, don't worry, there's a full written recipe on my new website, and you will of course find the link in the video description below. Now add around 2.5% salt, which is a little bit saltier than I would bake most of my breads. This is around one packet of instant yeast. It's a little bit too much, but I don't like half-opened packets of yeast. <laughs> Give everything a whisk so it's evenly combined. And now we're gonna add our wet ingredients, the first one of which will be our mozzarella juice. And look, I'm not exactly sure what the science is on what this does to our dough, but I've added it before and it's magic. Just watch. Next, we're gonna add one egg white, which is a fantastic trick to help with browning and crisping up your dough while giving it some extra lift. Last but not least, some lukewarm water. Be sure to use lukewarm water. Cold water is not gonna do the trick. Using a spatula, mix this dough until it's fully combined. It's gonna look quite rough for now, but that is completely fine. Next, we wanna let this dough rest and proof and for that, you wanna preheat your oven to a very low temperature, something like 30 degrees. It should feel like a nice hot summer day inside, not more than that. And first, we're gonna let this baby hydrate in there for roughly 20 minutes. Once hydrated, it's time to give this guy a little knead and we can do that straight in the bowl. Start with your hands wet. This is gonna prevent the dough from sticking too much, at least for a little bit. The way I like to knead this dough is by sort of folding it over itself numerous times and then sometimes you can lift it, slap it back into the bowl, which is gonna stretch it and then you can fold it again. You don't have to do this super long. A couple of minutes will suffice, maybe three to five. I think this dough looks pretty good for now. So we're gonna put it back in the bowl, cover it and let it rest for another 30 minutes in our warm oven. Meanwhile, we have time to take care of our pizza sauce. And my signature sauce starts with a good old can of tomatoes. So the important thing here is to go for a good quality brand, something like Muti or Oro di Parma is really good. And in terms of what type of tomato to get, the most important thing is to get whole tomatoes. The second most important thing is to get like a long shaped tomato, plum tomato or something like that. And then number three, if you can, get San Marzano tomatoes. Those are like the gold standard for a lot of Italian cooking. 
The reason I just said you have to get whole tomatoes is because we are gonna do the crushing ourselves, which almost always leads to much better results. There is one issue with these tomatoes. You might realize there's quite a lot of liquid in there. And if we made a sauce from this and put that on our pizza, it might get quite soggy. But on the other hand, this liquid does contain quite a lot of good tomato flavor, which I don't wanna waste. So what do we do? The easy solution is we're gonna thicken and intensify this sauce at the same time. And we're gonna do that with good old tomato paste. I'm gonna use like half a tube here, which is quite a lot, but we're gonna need it. Then let's add a little bit of garlic powder. Raw garlic tends to be a little bit overpowering in my opinion. To round this off with a little bit of an herbal taste, I'm gonna use these, which are pre-mixed, store-bought, dried Italian herbs from the supermarket. I think there's absolutely no shame in using these for a simple homemade recipe. Next, we're gonna add just a little touch of salt and just a little bit of sugar to balance the salt and acidity. Then we're gonna add a little bit of dried red chili flakes just for an ever so slight zing of heat. A little bit of olive oil for richness and a smooth emulsified texture. And last but not least, my secret weapon, fish sauce. Look, I promise there won't be any overwhelming fishy taste in your tomato sauce. It's much more like if you've ever had a classic Neapolitan style marinara pizza, which is just tomato sauce and anchovies, you know how well that salty umami punch mingles with tomatoes. Try this and you will never go back. Blitz until nice and smooth. And there we go, Andong's signature extra umami pizza sauce. This should be enough for four pizzas or the two pizzas we're making today plus a whole lot of dipping sauce. This pizza dough has now rested for half an hour, which means it's time to open it up, give it a few more folds to help with gluten development, and then we can put it back in its cozy little spa room to rest for another half hour. One thing you're definitely gonna need for pan pizza our pans. I think these round ones are absolutely perfect. A, they have that round classic pizza look and also they're a little bit easier to handle. Now of course this recipe would also work with a square pan, Sicilian style if you will, but I like to stick with the round ones. And because I already know a lot of you are gonna ask, I found these guys super cheap at a restaurant supply store. They were just three euros a piece. I'm gonna try to find similar ones online and I'm gonna link them in the video description below. What you wanna do now is grease each one of these pans with a little knob of butter. Then dust with a little bit of extra semolina. Take it easy though, a little goes a long way. Our pizza dough is done rising now, which means it's time to divide it into two halves. Then we're gonna form each one of these halves into a top ball and plop it into one of our pans, ideally in the center. Now it's time to shape our pizzas and we're gonna do that straight in the pizza pan. And I recommend for this step, you have a little bowl of cold water nearby so you can always keep your hands damp. Not wet, just damp so the dough doesn't stick. Start by gently pressing down in the center with your fingertips moving outwards. Keep the edges slightly thicker to form the crust. The goal is to achieve a thin, even base with a slightly thicker edge. This dough on a greased surface is actually really forgiving, so don't stress too much. And this, you guys, is the number one reason I prefer making pan pizza at home. This is so much more forgiving than stretching and tossing like a Neapolitan-style pizza dough and then struggling with getting it into the oven undamaged. If you just wanna make a good old pizza, nothing fancy, then this one is almost ready to go. And because it's really hard to find a lid for a pizza pan like this, I actually like to just cover it by putting it inside a plastic bag tent like this. But if you're like me, and as a kid, your favorite thing on the planet was a cheese crust pizza, then my friends, we can do that. This right here is our DIY low moisture mozzarella. Okay, okay. DIY low moisture mozzarella. <laughs> Much better. So here it is in all its glory. Now we want to slice this into long, thin, rectangular mozzarella sticks. These look perfect. That's exactly what we need. So the way you want to do this is first press your mozzarella sticks all the way along the edges of your pan pizza. Then remember to use damp fingers again and then just gently pull the edge over your mozzarella sticks and gently press to seal it shut. If anyone had told me as a kid that it's this easy to make a stuffed crust pizza, I would not have lived to see this day. And just like the other dough, we're covering this with a plastic bag for the final proof. For that final proof, anywhere from like 15 to 20 minutes or so is fine. And we're gonna use that time to not just preheat our oven to 
230 Celsius, which is 450 Fahrenheit, we're also gonna prep all of our toppings. So let's do that. First, even if you made a stuffed crust pizza before, you should have some of our low moisture mozzarella left over. So we're gonna chop that up into fine little dice. And while we're at the topic of cheese, if you only use low moisture mozzarella, in my opinion, that lacks a little bit in the flavor department. So you wanna go for some kind of young, not mature, young, mild cheese. So in Germany, I go for Gouda. I'm sure wherever you live, you have a similar cheese that melts well and is not too intense in flavor. Just be sure not to buy the pre-grated kind of cheese. Go for a big block of fresh cheese instead and grate that yourself for both texture and flavor. And if you want to do yourself a favor, get this grater. This grater has been life-changing for me and you can find the link to that in the tool section on my website. Next up, we got salami or pepperoni, whatever you like to call it. I personally really like this type. It's a Hungarian spicy salami that you can buy over here in Germany. And the reason I like it is because it has the perfect size, it's not too big, and it has the perfect thickness. It's neither too thick nor too thin. When it comes to other toppings, of course, you can do whatever you like, but I personally like slicing up some jalapenos, slicing up some red onions, as well as some black olives. There are basically no limits as to what you can put on your pizza, just be sure to slice your toppings not too thinly. These have to stand up to some heat. We're not making salad here. Here's our pizza dough. It has definitely puffed up a bit and smells really nicely, like perfectly proven dough. All right, now let's top this baby and we're gonna start with tomato sauce. You wanna use the back of a spoon to spread the sauce. And since it's a bit thicker than a Neapolitan style, for example, it can support quite a bit more topping. This looks perfect to me. I used roughly three tablespoons per pizza. I know we've already talked about two types of cheese that we're gonna add to this one, but there's a third one, and that is Parmesan cheese. Now, I'm using the pre-grated stuff, not the freshly grated one. Don't ask me why, but somehow I find that pre-grated Parmesan just has the right kind of feel for this. Don't overdo it. A thin coating like this is just fine. Now we're topping it with our freshly grated light melty cheese like Gouda, and then we wanna add just a few chunks of our DIY low moisture mozzarella. Even though this pizza can handle quite a lot of topping, I recommend not completely overdoing it with the cheeses. You should be able to still see some red spots from the tomato sauce. If you can't, well, you've probably overdone it. Yes, there is such a thing as too much of a good thing, and that good thing is cheese. Now we wanna add a little bit of our other toppings. I'm starting with some red onions, a few slices of jalapeno, some black olives, and finally a nice and even layer of our spicy salami. This is an incredible pizza if I've ever seen one, so let's go and bake this thing. Our oven is preheated to 230 Celsius, so we're gonna bake our pizza on the lowest position. And that is super important because that's gonna give us enough time to let the bottom crisp up before the toppings start burning. Now, while that's baking, just a quick word. Every oven is gonna be different and there will never be perfect instructions for baking. But what works for me is to turn the fan on, then bake the pizza for six minutes first, then turn it around, and then for even baking, bake it for another four minutes. Whatever works best for your oven is only something you can find out through trial and error. Okay, it's been three more minutes than I said, but look at this pizza. Look at this perfectly golden rim. Take a listen. Can you hear how crispy this is? Okay, but everyone can make a pizza that's golden on top. The question is, how does the bottom look? Oh! It is absolutely pristine. This is exactly what we wanted. And now you know why this recipe took two years to develop, because getting a pizza that is perfect on top and on the bottom, all made in a tiny ass home oven, that is science, if not art. By the way, don't let this pizza sit in the pan. You wanna transfer it to a wire rack like this and rest it for two to three minutes before slicing. Hold on, I actually just forgot a crucial part, which is dried oregano. You have to put dried oregano on your pizza. It makes a huge difference. Mm. Now, this is pizza. This incredible golden bottom, golden top, perfect topping, not soggy, not greasy pizza. Let me try this. Mm. Do not skip adding fish sauce to your tomato sauces. Game changer. Listen to the crisp. The toppings are catered to my taste, but I love them. If you don't, your opinion might be wrong, but that's okay. AP, you have to try this pizza. Okay, let me taste your amazing pizza. Whoa, oh my God, it's so full of flavor. I might just be a little bit too hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Do you taste fish? No, you didn't use the Oni oven. You use your home oven. Yes. 
Oh my god! How? So meaning everyone can just do this. And that, you guys, was exactly my goal. I wanted to create a pizza recipe that everyone can make in a regular, normal home oven and that comes out like this. And foolproof! This is so easy to make as well. Remember, the full recipe is on my website as always. Thank you so much for everyone watching and supporting me on Patreon. I'm gonna see you guys in the next one.